Bus bars make it much easier to connect and disconnect devices to your solar panel system. So no more connecting multiple cables to your battery terminals. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to add bus bars to your existing solar panel setup. Let's get started. You'll need two bus bars, ideally one red and one black. And these have four posts, which are, they're also called studs. And you could get a larger one if you want, so you can connect even more devices. You could get six, eight, 10, 12, whatever you want. And when you're picking bus bars, just size them for how much current is gonna be running through your system. These have a stated current rating of 250 amps, and I'm expecting around 40 amps max running through my system. So these are big enough for my needs. You'll also need two battery cables or tray cables, or they're sometimes called. One red, one black, again, is ideal. And they should, again, be sized for the amount of current running through your system. This is important, but uh, get the right ring connector size to fit onto your bus bars. So this is a 3 8 inch ring connector and it fits on there. But if I go just 1 16th inch smaller, this is a 5 16th inch uh, ring connector, it doesn't fit on there. So I almost always buy the 3 8 inch just because I know that they will fit on most of these bolts that a lot of these devices have. Just something to think about. You'll also need a ratchet or a wrench to tighten and loosen the bolts on your bus bars. And if you do go with a ratchet, just make sure the socket is long enough to fit on the bolt. You'll need a screwdriver for screwing and unscrewing the terminals on your charge controller. And lastly, you'll need a drill and some mounting screws. I just bought these at Home Depot to mount your bus bars to your mounting surface. The first step, and this is almost always the first step when you're working on your system, is to disconnect the solar panels from the charge controller. So I'm gonna unscrew and remove the solar panel wi wires from the charge controller's solar panel terminals. And this should always be done before disconnecting the battery. And if you know a little bit about DIY solar systems, you'll notice that I don't have some other features that would make this system easier to work with, like a battery disconnect switch or a solar disconnect switch. Uh, those are coming later. This is kind of the first in a mini series on upgrading a basic solar panel system. So I'm just gonna disconnect these, and if yours were actually connected to solar panels, just make sure the exposed wire ends don't touch. The next step is to disconnect everything from your battery. So I'm gonna remove these caps and use my screwdriver to unscrew the bolts. And obviously once that's done, the charge controller and the inverter will lose power, and we can start working on this system. Step three is to mount the bus bars to your mounting surface. So you can mount them wherever. You can mount them uh, horizontally, vertically. The one thing I will say is that mount them far enough apart that if you're ever you know, working on your system tightening a bolt, that you don't accidentally short circuit your system if you're you know, unscrewing a bolt with a wrench or something and you touch metal to metal on the positive to negative to end because these will be directly connected to the battery. So I'm gonna mount them a little far apart just to prevent that from happening. I think I'm gonna mount them horizontally, like right here. That looks good. Okay, they're mounted. Then the distance is far enough apart that limits the chance of you know a short circuit from what I was talking about. Now I'm gonna connect the positive charge controller and inverter cables to the positive bus bar and then the negative cables to the negative bus bar. So I just reconnected the positive inverter and charge controller cables to the positive bus bar and their negative cables to the negative bus bar. And I just hand tightened everything, but we'll you know go back and tighten everything up with the ratchet later on. Now we're gonna connect the positive battery terminal to the positive bus bar and the negative battery terminal to the negative bus bar using those battery cables. Now that the battery has been connected to the bus bars, you can see the charge controller turns back on because it has power. And let me switch the inverter on to check. This light should turn on in just a second. There you go. So the inverter also has power and is working. 
Now, because I hand tightened everything, I'm gonna take my screwdriver and my ratchet, and I'm gonna go back and tighten everything, and then we can put the caps back onto the battery terminals and bus bars. Okay, so the bolts are tightened, caps are back on. Last thing to do is reconnect the solar panels. Okay, so the solar panels are reattached and this wiring is not great. I would probably fix this if this was a permanent you know, installation but this is complete and now you can see the benefits. If I wanted to remove the inverter, let's say, and swap it out for a bigger inverter, I could just remove the inverter wires without having to remove any of the other wires. And if I wanted to add something, let's say I wanted to add a 12 volt fuse block to run 12 volt devices, I don't have to you know, unscrew everything, kill power to everything. I can just wire the positive wire to the positive bus bar, negative wire to the negative bus bar, and power my 12 volt devices that way. It makes it much easier to use a small system like this. Like I said, I'll have more videos coming out soon about how to upgrade systems like this for usability and safety. So subscribe to get notified when those videos come out. But that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.